remember the name of last week's story. It was about Joseph. Joseph was one of 12 brothers and he was his father's favourite and his father gave him a wonderful coat. But at the end of the story, Joseph was in prison and he stayed in prison for a long time, two whole years in fact. Poor Joseph, it looked as though everyone had forgotten him, but God was still watching over him. So let's open the book and continue the story of Joseph the ruler. One morning, one of the other prisoners said to Joseph, I had a dream last night, a strange dream. I dreamt I saw a grapevine with three branches. Suddenly bunches of grapes burst out of these branches, so I squeezed them into a cup and gave it to the king to drink. I wonder what it means. Joseph listened to the dream. God listened too. Then he whispered the dream's meaning into Joseph's ear. I know what it means, said Joseph. Before you were sent to prison, you served wine to the king. Well, in three days, you will be set free and serve him wine once more. And that's exactly what happened. And when the wine server was set free, he promised to help Joseph get out too. Two long years went by. Then one morning the king of Egypt said, I had a dream last night, a strange dream, and I can't work out what it means. A dream, said his wine server. I know a man who can tell you all about your dreams. And straight away Joseph was brought up out of prison. I was standing on the banks of the river, the king said to Joseph when I saw seven fat cows walk out of the water. They were chewing happily on the grass when seven other cows joined them. These cows were bony and thin, and instead of eating the grass, they ate the first seven cows. But they stayed as skinny as ever. What can it mean? God whispered in Joseph's ear. Joseph listened. Then he bowed and said, Your Majesty, for the next seven years, Egypt will grow many good crops and be as fat as those first cows. But after that, for another seven years, hardly any food at all will grow. So unless you want your people to look like those skinny cows, you must store up food in the good years and use it wisely later. The king was so impressed with Joseph's answer that he not only let him stay out of prison, he put him in charge of storing and saving and serving out Egypt's food. Seven good ears were followed by seven bad ears. And after the king, Joseph became the most important man in Egypt. It was like a dream come true. One day, there was a knock at Joseph's door. And when he answered it, his eleven brothers were standing there. They bowed down before him. They kissed his feet and they begged, Kind sir, we have come to Egypt all the way from the land of Canaan. We have no food. We are starving. May we please buy some food from you. Joseph said nothing. He just stared at his brothers. He knew who they were, but they did not recognise him. All right, said Joseph in his sternest voice. I will sell you food. And he ordered his servants to load his brother's animals. But that wasn't all he told them to do. Take one of my silver cups, he said, and hide it in the sack of food tied to the youngest boy's donkey. Joseph had a plan. He wanted to see if his brothers had changed. When Joseph's brothers reached the edge of the city, his servants stopped them and searched through their sacks. What did they find? The silver cup, of course. We don't know how it got there, the brothers exclaimed to Joseph. Your brother stole it, 
That's how, Joseph answered. So he must stay here in Egypt and be my slave. No, please, begged the brothers. That would break our father's heart. Keep one of us instead. When Joseph heard that, he knew his brothers had changed. So he told them who he was right then and there. I am Joseph, he announced, your long lost brother. This news did not make the brothers feel any better. They were so frightened, in fact, that they could hardly speak. Don't be afraid, said Joseph. I forgive you. You meant to hurt me, but God used what you did to save us all from this terrible famine. Now go. Fetch my father and the rest of our family to come and live in Egypt with me. The brothers looked up. The brothers grinned. The brothers cheered, hooray! And after a lot of hugging and helloing and handshaking, they set off for Canaan to tell Jacob the good news. And Joseph? Joseph just sat back on his throne and smiled and thanked God for making his dreams come true. There are two things I really like about that story. Firstly, God never forgot about Joseph. And secondly, Joseph was able to forgive his brothers. That can't have been easy. Joseph looked so different that his brothers didn't recognise him. He could have paid them back for being nasty to him, but instead he was kind to them and forgave them. Close your eyes now and think for a moment of anyone you need to forgive today. Now, I'm going to say a prayer and if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, thank you that you didn't forget about Joseph. Thank you for helping him to forgive his brothers. Please help us to be forgiving too. Amen. Let's say the words of the Lord's Prayer together too. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. This Bible story is from the Lion Storyteller Bible by Bob Hartman. It's used by permission of Lion Hudson, part of the SPCK Group. Music